of MCM Comic Con. We are approaching 5 p.m. on a Saturday. It's been a long day. But we are still here, we are still enjoying Con, and closing our stage today, we have got a fantastic treat for you. The panel here is called Men Here's Fate, a new festival LARP. So please, welcome to the stage, Nick Young, Persephone, Alex Smith, Sarah Partridge, and leading them all is Hefty Yeti. Hello. How are we all doing this afternoon? Oh, the cowboys are here, that's all good. Hi. The here as well, that's fine, I guess. Matt, we all good? We're all having fun? Yeah. Are we all hydrated? That's the thing. Hey. No, no, neither am I. Um, so, quick Q&A. Uh, yes, I am half a bear at the moment. If you want to see the rest of the bear, you have to come over to the LARP zone over there, and we will <laughs> just watch me die. So, I have made a few notes. I don't normally do this, but this has got to be good. So, firstly, what is LARP? It's d, &D in a field. It's great. It's a lot of fun. It's very violent, if you want it to be. <laughs> LARP is a gateway, I think, to a larger world. Away from problems in this world, from the downsides of everything in life. It's a wonderful place to be. We've got a wonderful lineup here. Four people who have decided to come together with a dream of making a new life, a new fest system, but they've made it more acceptable, well, accessible, more welcoming, more community focused. For everybody who wants to get into this, to make it easy for people to get into it. This weekend I have faced so many questions from people saying, how do I get into LARP? Because it seems to be the most difficult thing in the world to get into at the moment. They want to fix this. Sorry, I'm stood in the way. So hopefully, we'll go through a little bit of an introduction. They can talk about what Men Here's Fate is going to be. And then we'll open it up to questions. So we'll go from there. So first of all, we have the wonderful Sarah, who is a writer on the Men Here's Fate team. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Secondly, we have Alex Smith, who is the business director for Men Here's Fate. Hello, thank you very much everyone for coming. Next, we have Nick, who is the creative director to Men Here's Fate. Hi everyone. Is security here? Last but definitely not least, we have Persephone, who is the project manager. She also has the most difficult job, because she has to try to get this lot to do their jobs. It's a lot of fun. You're such a liar. <laughs> so, when it comes to love, the big thing is the story. It's the images behind the nations, behind the people, behind the game. Sarah, at the end there. Go ahead. So, writing this, how have you find it? What's exciting, what's not exciting? Okay, so it's, um, what's, what's the most exciting about uh, uh, writing is that rather than just one or two people involved in the project, there's actually a very vast team, and all of us come from lots of different LARPs. Um, some, of them, some of us do fest LARPs, some of us do like, small individual uh, things, and we've got lots of different shared experiences, and different types of experiences all over the place so what's nice about that is we can all create this kind of lovely collaborative pool um, of experience that is where we all differ in different ways but we can make something new and fresh uh, and actually as I was saying earlier one of the wonderful things about this as a writer that I, I also write for a long-standing system is that there's no rules uh, we get to make everything from scratch so we, we can set our own rules and guidelines it's a really exciting project have you come across any bits so far that you've, you've gone, 
that's amazing. I'm really, I'm really liking this. Not, not even just from you as a writer, because there are quite a few writers doing this. Um, I think the main thing that's excited me so far is having some of the initial meetings about coming up with uh, mechanisms of things like how the undead might work and the demons, and just seeing a bunch of people in a room going, oh, what about this? And like, oh yeah, that's such a cool idea. Um, so, yeah, that's the best thing for me. Um, yeah. Lovely stuff. Great. Yeah. It might be worth, uh, if people are interested, I mean, there's a few, few familiar faces in the crowd that we know from the LARPing scene, which is awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate you coming. Uh, and I'm guessing you're most interested to hear about what the new LARP's actually going to be. Uh, and then you've probably got another group of uh, people here who are interested in LARP in general. Um, rather, they've never tried it, they want to give it a go. Um, I can sell you on that for hours, but what it might be useful is if you make Nick want to quickly explain the brief premise of what our LARP is going to be, the world, and then, you know, yeah, we have some context. Yeah, so it's a medieval system. Uh, oh, my time here is up for medieval, I'm surprised, 17th century, sort of like dress codes. There's a large variety of uh, different ways you can dress and act based around nine different nations set in three different roles. And this is a, a game where it's a wonderful, beautiful, high fantasy world, but there's a demonic invasion that's corrupted people and you've been losing this battle for like 50 years. So we really need people to help us drive back the forces of evil and expel it from existence. We're taking back our own land. We're not taking other people's land that already exist. We're taking back our own land that has been taken away from us from this evil force. Uh, so we will have like a pantheon of gods as well, and they are like more like a Greek style pantheon of gods that people can worship in. So they are flawed individuals of their own personalities and up to no good, um, as well as good sometimes. Uh, and you've got to choose which ones you want to go with, help them out, and to, like, do everything else as well as in a generic fantasy world. So it's a uh, high fantasy, lots of magic, uh, combat, but it looks like it's accessible for everyone. So it isn't just about uh, fighting off the demonic hordes. It's a, uh, we have a guilds designed specifically to make it easy for everyone to get involved in, no matter what, like, what your kind of, like, physical capabilities are. We have like, things like go off on adventures and go uh, look for ancient artifacts. We do almost like crystal maze type encounters, as well as I think roads are something that everyone loves. Roads. D and D is a massive part of everything that we do in love. And rogues are sort of the thing that everyone sort of puts aside because it has some problematic material. But we've got no, we're going to actually accept that rogues exist. We're going to go off and do adventures. We're going to make you steal from NPCs and go off on adventures and steal that hidden artifact behind all these different traps. So there's a variety of different fun things you can do that isn't just bonking someone, even though fighting is really good fun. Everyone likes a good scrap. Definitely. So, Persephone, when you've been wrangling everyone together, do you think the big thing to be with a new LARP system, a new LARP fair system, is having something different that is going to stand out and make, set you apart from everyone else because there are another three well set up, defined LARP systems out there. So this is a huge challenge. How do you do it? What is the thing that is going to set Menia's fate apart? from everyone else. So I think, as Sarah's mentioned, we've had like a lot of experience with those various systems. Um, and we're trying to move it forward in the way some of them have done in the past. Um, building on those sort of things, there's a huge pool of experience to draw from. And they have their flaws, they have the bits that they're good at. We're expecting that there's going to be certain things that we're not catering to. It's very much about knowing what you want your game to be. Um, we want this game to be accessible, we want this game to be recognisable, um, and we want it to be a lot of fun for people in a way that isn't necessarily being offered in other spaces. Sorry, I lost my badge halfway through that. I think making something accessible for everyone getting involved creative, because when it comes to a lot of things for love, everyone who is talented at making costume so the cosplayers out there people who have all of these sorts of talents i have none of these i use a stapler to put my kit together it's wonderful i'm really bad at it but having these sorts of things going on 
are you going to be opening up to say like the look and feel for each of your nine nations to enable people who want to come along and join them to take a creative spin on each of these nations to put their own thing in thought into it I would like to answer the previous question <laughs> um, just quickly Sorry, to address what you were saying about where, uh, where, so what sets us apart from the other marks I think is a, is a big is a big question uh, that it needs some attention my pitch for what sets our LARP apart from all the other LARPs is what Sarah and Persephone have both said about how we're essentially a super group. Um, what you see here is just a representation of part of our team. We have many more faces and, uh, and brains from within all of the LARPing scene. And if you're not familiar with LARP, that's many systems, many different ways of doing it, many different kinds of role playing, many different stories. Um, many different scales as well, both festival scale and smaller individual experiences. We are taking everything we've learned over the last two decades of doing that, and we're trying to do another festival LARP that just is, is better in, in pretty much every way we can make it. It's not going to be exactly the same as your favorite LARP. It may not directly compete with the one that you currently love, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to give another option that has learned as much as it can other systems and we hope you'll really enjoy it. Um, we are also putting a huge amount of effort and money into the production quality of coming to this event. When, when you come to this event, it's, it's gonna, we're, we're trying to do the best for you in terms of services, in terms of simple things, toilets, showers, things like that, you know, like we're making sure that all of that is nice. We're making sure that you, uh, when you come to the big hub, the big town centre we're creating, where you may come from one of the many nations that we'll describe in a minute, um, when you come to our town centre, all of the tents that we're putting up there are really awesome, icy looking tents. They're not white plastic marquees. Um, we, you know, we, we have the same people that are helping up put up these amazing canvas tents are going to be helping us around the site, creating lighting environments, creating just, just things that make, when you wander around, I mean, there's a couple of LARPs we already go to, big big festival LARPs, and when you go to the spaces in those LARPs, if you've never been LARPing before, and you look across a field of 2,000 people with fires and nothing but canvas tents and medieval colour dot across that view, it's something really special. And it's something that we are bearing in mind when we design the venue, we design this experience for you, that you are going to... It's going to be something else. If you've never been to LARP before and you love dressing up, like we do, um, it puts that dressing up in place. It gives it a reason. It gives you a motivation to stitch something, to create something. And, and, and that's what we're doing, so we hopefully light the fire of creation under you. Now, do you want to talk about some costume stuff? Uh, I'm, I'm going to interrupt. I'm going to interrupt. So I want to ask you a question. So... This all, I know where this all stemmed from back in the past, because I know we have had conversations with regards to that, with fest labs, with issues with them, with good things in them. What was it that really made you want to go, you know what, I can do better than this, and I want to do this myself? What was, that fi what was that defining moment for you that made you just want to step up and go, Let's put all this time, all this effort, all this money into it and make something that's going to be phenomenal for all these LARPers out in this country. Well, around the world, hopefully. The, the short answer is there was enough clever people around me that I thought we could pull it off. Um, you know, I, I've been doing this for 10 years and I know lots of people now. And, um, and I thought, yeah, there's, there's, there's the brains and ability to create something really cool here. Everybody knows who's done LARPing or anything even adjacent to this hobby. It's collaborative by its very nature. Like, it just is. It's a collaborative attempt at trying to make it fun for each other. That's at its core what this whole experience is. And, and um, yeah, I just, I just knew we could do it. Beyond that, I guess in layman's terms, it's a bit like when you've played a lot of D&D games and you're deciding to DM it yourself. And you're like, I, I understand this, I get this, I enjoy this. I wonder if I can take our own spin in it. And I, I'm, I mean, I could never do a LARP on my own. I could do a D&D &D adventure on my own, but never a LARP. So really, I'm beholden to the clever, uh, <laughs> more uh, sort of uh, inspired and informed people around me. And I, and I guess I just lend my lust and love uh, for LARP and many other L's 
You put yourself down. You are a very creative guy. So if you haven't watched it, the Pat Films booty was the D&D that you ran, which was, which was phenomenal. It was very, very good. So don't put yourself down. So look and feel. How are you gonna? How are you gonna open it up? So because you have a certain look and feel. How are you gonna open it up so that if people want to come along and put spins on it, are they able to? But also talk about the costumes as well for the specific yeah. nations. So I'm gonna say yes. Um, I'm gonna answer that question. But first, I'm gonna put out something that's also I think really important to talk about is um, essentially what we're just talking about with like what we're doing. My questions are pointless. I think. I know. I want to know stuff. Wait, wait, wait. Um, you agree with it. <laughs> So, um, one of the things I think that we're doing really different is currently in FEST systems for LARP, even smaller LARP systems, there is no train security at those sites. And that is something that we're putting in. We're our, our safety to our players and um, making sure that they're well looked after is like paramount to us. Making sure that there are train security on site in case anything bad happens. They are there to make sure that you are well looked after and the right situations are put in place, as well as medical care. Um, because medical care is also really important. We don't want anyone to have accidents, but unfortunately they do sometimes happen. Um, and we want to make sure that when the worst possible thing happens, we are looking after you the best of our ability. And we're putting our, our money and our time and effort to make sure that those systems are in place. I think that's really important. It's a boring part of it, of event management, is making, is making sure that you're safe. And it's like you don't really see, because it's kind of hidden in the background, but it is a really important part of making sure that when you come to this game, you're putting your time, your effort, your love into your costume, into your kit, your character, your roleplay, but you also know you're doing that in a safe environment. This was one of the first things I remember we spoke about, is health and safety, player safety, player support. So yeah, you have done phenomenal. That new word, well with it. So, really, really good. So, do you want to talk about the actual kit? costumes and things like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Coached over there. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's his idea, so I'm just like, that's not that. He's like, remember that idea you came up with? It's like, yes, the idea I came up with. Yeah, cool. But, um, yeah, so what we want to try and do is make sure that it, every player plays LARP differently. And that's absolutely fine. Like, it's designed to be that way. Everyone has their own story they want to tell. Or sometimes it's, I just want to chill out with my mates and be in that in a group for a couple of days. And so I was like, I want to have a bespoke individual adventure that goes on for years. I have a massive narrative like, this is the beginning, this is the middle, and this is the end of my character. Everyone has their own individual wants. Someone wants to be the grand, amazing ritualist. Someone wants to be um, a priest. Someone wants to be an overlord. And someone wants to be a really nice guy and a hero. Yeah, we all know that you want to be the overlords. So. Yeah. Right. So, um, so what we've done is we've made like a we've put our nine nations in three separate realms, which are called like individual ideas of what we think players will be interested in. So we can sort of tailor the adventure for people within those nations, and then within those nations has its own graph of where you can go with it. So you can get access every part of the game from every nation, but some of it is focused on particular styles of play. So uh, our first realm. It's sort of a, a Disney D&D adventure vibe. We go in like an adventuring parties, go out really high, really bright and colourful in the first nation. And then the second nation is kind of like the all enchanted forest. We have all the good people that are going to go around doing the wise decisions and, survi uh, and survivalists. And on the other side of that is like your Disney villains nation. Whereas people are dressed up really high on the top. Yeah, the cowboys love it. And, <laughs> Like your Disney villain nations, because people want to be but like the big sort of like bad guy, but also we designed it in a way that it's collaborative with other players. So the nation, uh, the first nation and the third nation, can have a really lovely time of having interpersonal stories between each other, but also not being essentially PvP, because this is a PVE system that has elements of you can have fun with each other, but we're not against each other, because the world is getting messed up by demons, and we need to deal with that and not mess with each other. But in, in all of though, there is an element of PvP constantly oh, throughout. Yeah. So pe two people going for the same, vying for the same role becomes PvP. So. Yeah, so that's going to be like more political, social PvP. Uh, some uh, LARPs can specialise in that. 
and uh, Rid, Rid is not kind of specialising in kind of political, kind of like parliamentary PvP, they're kind of more like social PvP instead of like combative. Because we have a lot of plot, we've designed our game to be able to shoot out loads of stuff. We've got loads of incredible writers from a variety of amazing systems and games. And we are able to shoot out so much plot and content to our player base, which is very hard to see in fest size systems. Because usually if you want to do smaller games, because you have that personal plot, we've designed a way that we can actually do that on a much bigger scale. Uh, so we're going to have to see loads of personal interaction between groups, nations. So we have national plot writers, we have realm plot writers, overworld plot writers, and we have individual guilds that you can sign up to to do plot and go on adventures with them as well. So there's no excuse to not be busy if you want to be busy. If you don't want to be busy, you can just not jump in onto the adventures. And that's absolutely fine. Okay. So there's there's nine nations across three realms. Yep. Yeah. So with all of these things in mind, as creative director, what is it that you are most excited about seeing when this LARP starts next year? It's, it's two things. One's a mechanical thing. I've already allowed one, so... Oh, one. Boo, boo, boo. Um, I think it's the ritual system that uh, uh, Sarah created and has written. The, the weird reading, that is, that is right, sir. I'm very sorry, please don't hurt me. Um, so with the uh, weird reading system, we have designed a way that we can do uh, live projections as you're casting your ritual system. So say for example, you want to be raising a grand wall of thorns to, defect, to defend a town. Whilst you're casting this ritual, there's invisible screens that shoot projections on there where they'll see these walls appear around you as thorns as you're casting your ritual live in-game and in-play. Um, I, mean, I think that's really special and I really love that. I mean, the other system that Sarah has created, which makes it a non-economic-based sort of like economic based system. Um, it's more about the role play and the fun of like, trying really hard and then being rewarded that with visuals. Because the people, the audience on the outside can see these walls come up but also see you in the middle doing this amazing role play experience of doing these, these, these rituals. As well as you on the inside can see these walls and also everyone else go on the outside seeing you look absolutely awesome in your amazing costume shooting out magical creations. Okay, so a lot of people are going to be interested in combat side of it, but let's let someone else talk. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to, because it's part of the writing thing, so we'll swing back to talking so, about the So writing. when it comes to combat, I'll, I'll head combat. So, we have other people handling combat. I think right now it's probably best if we don't talk about it too much, just because. Well, I mean, I'm certainly not going to give you the accurate truth. Um, yeah. Um, so in a combat, once again, we want to make that as accessible as possible. So we're doing a couple of things. So we're trying to make combat look as cool as possible, um, and also have a variety of play. Uh, once again, everyone doesn't want us to be fighter. They also want paladins, you know, warlocks, sorcerers, mages. So we have systems where, even by magic combat, we have melee casting of, of magic, as well as we can shoot it at a 30-foot range. So the reason why we're doing that as well is having ranged combat on a large scale, because we have a lot of refs in our game, is, um, is so that more people can access combat that aren't happy being in melee combat all the time, because it's physically exhausting. Um, so just having that extra bit of range means that more people get involved in combat if they want to. Um, we we're doing a global hit system, so it's not individual hit locations, it's an overall body location. So that means, uh, for people who haven't done that before, is say you've got two hits standard and you're wearing heavy armour, you might have like eight hit points, which means if you get hit eight times, then you're laying on the floor and then someone can come over and start trying to stop you from dying. Uh, we are doing a quite a savage combat system. Uh, Sarah has decided that she wants her bloodlust to continue throughout the player base so having a really low bleed out time. We think death is an important part of, of the games and uh, we want our players to die and suffer. Um, but also have a lovely time. Um, 
we, they think seeing your own funeral is something that's really interesting and love. And we've got lots of special mechanics where we can bring people back to the dead to talk to last time, so you can say goodbye to your loved ones and things like that. So um, we're going to try and make people cry, but also laugh and have an amazing time as well. Excellent. That's what, that's what I was after. That's what I was after. That's cool. So, I have questions for both. Do you want to, should we talk about rituals a little bit and the writing behind it all? So, the new ritual, the new ritual system. Shut up, you. So, with the ritual system, when it comes to the writing, because you've gone quite grand and you've gone quite for something quite new with everything. So, so people might know things as well. Necromancy, for example, is not necromancy. It's Necromancy by a new name and things like that. So do you want to talk through some of the rituals and some of the magic and... Yeah, sure. So, um, okay, so firstly, the basis of magic in Muneer's fate is a thing called the weird. Uh, weird is uh, the word for chaotic magic. It's magic that exists everywhere, but it's not necessarily containable. Um, now, within each person that is a sorcerer, they might be able to, to wield a little bit of that, but they can't really use much. In this system, we've got 12 gods, and at some point in history, they created a huge sentient being called Mimir. And they created that out of this world to give the mortals of the land the ability to wield great, great magics. And that was known to become a thing called weird weaving. And that is the basis of the ritual system in this game. Um, so obviously, as people have mentioned, in, the, in several other LARPs, there's various different types of ritual system, and all of you have pros and cons. Uh, this one has its own little bit of a USB. It's, it's not just about making the magic, it's about the journey of creating magic. So there is a system whereby, if you wish to create a weaving in this game, you can't just walk into the uh, into Muneer and the, the, the fragment and, and do your working. You have to first find out what the price is. Um, a good way of imagining this is, imagine that weaving magic is a bit like being a musician. And imagine that Muneer is a really talented musician that has no memory. So what you have to do in this system is you have to work with Muneer and teach it how to use its own talent. And that starts by gathering the right things for it, which might be, go get me a grand piano, go get me some sheet music, go get me a gospel choir. Um, and then once you've done those things, now you can work with that, that spirit and create a massive piece of magic. So the whole thing is a journey from start to finish. It's not a, take some money from me, now I shall do a song, and I have done some magic. And that's one of the beautiful things about the, system, the magic system in this game. That's awesome. Sounds really cool. Because for once, I'm actually going to be getting involved in that sort of the game. I'm not going combat for a lot for once. For once. So we're really hoping it. it will be very immersive, and hopefully, it will also get people involved from different areas of the game. You might need to go out and seek these components, what which we call the hand swords, and you might need to do that through maybe the Adventurers Guild or through various plot lines. So it should be a whole adventure, which would be really fun for people and inclusive. That's awesome. We get to talk about guilds. So, M MF is doing a wonderful thing with these guilds. Do you want to expand? What are all the guilds? What do they do? Yeah, so the, um, the guild systems are a way that enable us to deliver plot in a really targeted way where um, it's really obvious from the guild, what that what will be. So it's a really good way of signposting stuff uh, and allowing us to direct it either to new players who don't have uh, not done much art before, they don't really know what they're doing, but there is an adventurer's guild, there's a major's guild. Those things are a collection of ideas already within sort of my consciousness of people who've played games and across a bunch of different media. Um, so they'll have an idea of, cool, I, am, I want to be a mage, I'll go and talk to the Mages Guild. I can figure, I can get involved in some plot that the Mages Guild are putting out there. Um, we're going to be putting out plot by a massive amount, so we can have it on 
all sorts of levels. Those people who are brand new to it, some people will be coming in who've been LARPing for 10 years, 20 years, however long, and they'll want something that's a bit more complex that they can sink their teeth into, and that'll be available as well. Um, so it's a really good plot delivery system that allows us to keep track of sort of overworld plot that's going on and really big, big projects that people are doing, and also lets us keep an eye on those people who might need a bit more support, um, and make sure that they're not left behind, that they get to really enjoy their event and do a load of stuff around that. So this is going to be a really good way for people who are brand new to LARP, wanting to get involved in stuff, who might be a bit daunted by the idea of coming into a big fest system where plot is something there, but they don't know how to get into it. A guild is a good way for them to go up to someone and go, what do I do? Yeah, absolutely. We're, I mean, we're going to signpost it really strongly that that is a thing for you to for people to do. Um, it's going to be in big neon, big neon lights. You are a, a wizard. Go talk to the Majors Guild. Have a chat with them. See what you could get involved in. Um, you want to go and do a little bit of fighting? Go be an adventurer. There will be there will be stuff there written for you. You're not going to have to like uncover it and figure out the system before you can get involved. We want to make it nice and upfront so people can have a great event. At the end of the day, that's all, that's all that matters, isn't it? So, um, I will say, if anybody has any questions about this at any point, please raise your hand because we have someone who works here who's actually going to run around with a mic instead of it being me for a change. So, if you do have any questions, please. Oh, yeah, we do have, we have, we have, we have one over there. Who wants to take this one? <laughs> Hold please, your call is important to us. <laughs> I'm going to rattle through these quite quickly because there is nine. Um, so our First Nation is a uh, very D&D adventurer. Um, they are all about that story. They're all about um, making sure that you're recorded in song and that people remember you as the greatest whatever. Hero is a common one and one that we expect to do a lot, but it's about being the best thing you can be at your thing. Uh, Nation 2 is the Enchanted Forest. Um, they are... You know what I'm Yeah, so the Enchanted Forest is actually people that are surviving this insanely magical forest. Uh, with like the fauna and the trees and kind of, uh, spirits within them that are constantly talking to you and trying to do riddles and things of you. So people that are really good at puzzle solving and sorting out delicate situations. They're also stuck in between the First Nation, essentially the evil, I say not evil, sorry, but like the villains sort of nation, where being stuck between them, you have to be really good at politics and working out puzzles and knowing what to do. Uh, yeah, so Nation, th uh, Nation 3 uh, are dark story, dark stories, dark fairy tales, that sort of thing. Uh, Nation 4 is pirates. Um, but a bit more than that. They are all about exploring. They have a uh, like massive fleet. Um, they're all about adventure and swashbuckling tales and being daring. Uh, nation 5 is Sarah. Yeah, so Nation 5 is a city nation. Uh, it's, uh, they, they basically they don't believe in kings and masters. They, they are run by a governance of, well, a council of governors. Uh, they're very much into their trade, uh, shifty under the, under the counter deals. Um, but also on top of that, they're also really into being wildly extravagant and showing off, mostly to hide what their shady counterparts are up to. That's pretty much what they're about. <laughs> yeah, so the Six Nation is about everything is very difficult to try and transport all these very important materials off into these war fronts and different stations going on. So we need people that are a hardy nation that goes across, which is an entire nation of literally people that are transporting very important uh, large and heavy goods. So these nations are based around the large pack animal slash monster that they have chosen and your like, group dynamic is based around that monster. Uh, so you could have a giant um, 
I don't think you want. So we've got a, a bear that will be turning up later. So you might have a herd of bears and you are strapping all of your equipment to these bears and your job is, as a group, herding these bears across the wilderness and defending them and the bears defend themselves against all these monsters that are trying to stop you as they're trying to deliver your, your thing. Mission uh, seven are very much uh, about their state over the individual. Um, they are the one that I'm vaguely dressed as, uh, so they're going to be a little bit uh, fantasy Grecian in look. Um, and yeah, they also are fairly big on their like stories and service to their state and leaving behind a really big legacy. Nation 8 is the one that I wrote. Um, so they got hit very, very hard by this giant demon invasion that's happened and were forced underground. Um, they've been under there in a massive cave system for years and years and years and years. Um, they are a very religious group. And yeah, they're having a lovely time underground, except for all of the horrible underground bits. Um, Oh, and they really like mining and making cool stuff. They have all of the best magic items. Uh, and do you want to mine? Um, so Nation 9 is one that I really like. Uh, that was written in partnership with Mark Humes, I think is writing on that one. Um, so Nation 9 is a very high gothic fantasy. This is a few like things like Castlevania and stuff like that. This is the nation for you. This is where everything outside is really, really horrible and you don't want to be outside. And in fact, you don't want to work at all. And that's fine. You don't have to work in life. You can work in death instead. So you can sign away your livelihood and make sure that you can go live the best life, live in opulent dresses and castles where it's safe and then manage your large necromantic armies and serfs that are going off, which are your ancestors that you're looking after, making sure that they're working the land, working the mines, and also being your large skeletal army. Um, however, there's some people that do want to work and don't want to work in there. Uh, so we have a, a, a mix of people. So um, say something's messing with your ancestors and you're not getting the food from your crops because something's messing with it, you need what is essentially a mix between a SWAT team and Scooby-Doo mystery machine. And those people go out, solve the problem, fight their way to that problem, solve the situation, and then try and get back home safely. It's a lot to take in. I am, I am aware of this. Best LARPs have a lot of rules, they have a lot of law, they have a massive wiki, and it is a lot to take in. But I am, I am assured that there will be lots of things put in place for the neurospicy, out there for people who are uh, dyslexic who struggle to read um, massive walls of text there will be things in place to help everybody okay so don't let this be too daunting there will be a lot of well when it comes to the media side of stuff so i don't know if you've got any experience with any content youtube or twitch at all so <laughs> Um, what, is, what are the steps for coming forward? How are you going to get all the information out about Emma, uh, many of like two people? How, what sort of things are you looking to put out? And how are you going to do it? So, hello everyone again. Um, so one of the main things we're doing, which will be the portal to learning as much of this as possible, is we're going to make, we're making a brand new website that isn't made two decades ago. Uh, that's right, we, are, we, we have a professional team of web developers, it's not us, um, making a real website that will have a character creator, that will have lore and wiki. Obviously this game is starting next year and we've been writing it for about six months. So, there is going to be some development of that website, uh, media is going to be generated over time as we see how the game works with players and we work out best practices. Before that, however, we are going to be trying to create a lot of video media around helping people understand what a brief is for costume, what the rules are, 
what combat actually might look a bit like. All these things that may you know, not be overly relevant to existing LARPers, but we do fully appreciate that there's a huge barrier to entry into understanding what the hell actually goes on at these events. So we're going to be trying to create really user-friendly, nice video media that will try and teach everybody as much as they can so they don't have to sit through walls of text. Uh, that hopefully loosely describes our media plan. Uh, and we will try and create as much of it as possible. Excellent, so I hate reading. <laughs> so, do we have any more questions? Anyone? Oh. Hello there. Um, so earlier on you mentioned that the combat people aren't here, but just as a general question, you mentioned about like paladins and such. How will magic with martial fighting sort of combine with each other? Um, because as a person who has done battle maging and general combat, I want to bring those together to make more fun. We're going to have three different types. Uh, so we have essentially our... We're trying to use a non-gendered term. I think we're trying to... Work. What was the one that we went with in the end? The non... Okay, so we'll go with bigger. Because now we have like essentially bigger points. Uh, so bigger is what you expend to do your, your, your martial combat. Uh, so that's things like, you know, being able to lop off someone's arm, or do something cool, like disarm will be an ability. So you hit someone, say disarm, and they fumble their sword to the ground. Because that's just showing off your skill in, in arm combat to be able to disarm someone with ease. Uh, so that's one type, which is bigger. We also then have our magic as well. And that's obviously the magic spell casting will be either melee, which is cheaper to cast, or you can shoot it up to 30 foot range, uh, which includes things like healing. So if your mate is down on the ground behind enemy lines, you can fire off a healing spell at them and get them back up again whilst they're behind enemy lines and let them have either a wonderful time of dealing with their own healers in the back lines or letting them run as fast as they can back to safety. Um, and then you're also going to have uh, something called Faith. So Faith is our priest mechanic and that can be done in a variety of ways that you can expend that. So every player is going to have a Faith token which is something that you cannot sell. It's a roleplay reward token that you have as an individual player that is assigned to yourself. And you can give that only to priests. So priests are trying to go around and they're, they're rewarded for roleplaying and trying to get people to join your church or join your, kind of like your religion. And if you can convince more people, you have more power. And you can either expend that by doing large rituals, expending your faith and rewarding your gods back, or getting, asking for things from your god, or sending messages, or asking for meetings with them. Or you can do it in combat, be like a religious paladin fighter, where you can like mix up your faith expenditure with holy strikes, as well as your vigor. Or you can mix that again with your magic and like your faith. Or you can also do it in a defensive healing way as well. So it gives you a, a cleric abilities with faith, kind of like a paladin smitey sort of ability. So we're having a lot of variety, and then by combining those together, it's sort of more unique varieties of how you go about playing your game and the mechanics also rewarding you with that. So uh, yeah, that's a good variety of fight styles. I hope that helps. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Ooh. We have two. Excellent. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, you mentioned how you have like, different guilds depending on, like, say, class, like, majors and whatnot. Would there be, like, guilds to do with not, like, classes, say, for example, the blacksmith or merchant guild? Yeah, so you're saying that, like, the skills for specific classes. Guilds, sorry, guilds for specific classes. Yeah, yeah. So um, the, the guilds aren't for specific classes. It's more like character archetypes. Um, but then you can, anyone can access them. It's just what you want to do. Um, but also they're quite open to different things. So for uh, example, the Adventurers Guild, when you go in there, there'll be loads and loads of, kind of like posters of what sort of missions are going on, what type of missions they are, what times and days they're going to be on, but also if they're going to be combat-based or non-combat-based. So people know that, like, okay, I'm not okay with physically fighting, and that's perfectly fine. And then we have different adventures for them in the Adventurers Guild. So it might be search and rescue, that could be a healing-based mission, that could be an investigation-type mission. That, and that's just an adventures, so it's not always 
I'm a fighter, I go to the Adventurers Guild. Is I'm a healer, I go to the Adventurers Guild. I'm a person trying to seek knowledge, I go to the Adventurers Guild. So it just is doing a variety of stuff, but it's all boarded up, so you can see very easily what it is, what you can have access to, and, and, and go with that. Um, another one is essentially we're using the guilds as a way to make everything as in character as possible. So we've destroyed, uh, if you don't know what this term means, God. We don't have a God system in our game. We've gotten rid of the game's operation desk. We think that there's no need for that, because essentially you're paying for a weekend of luck. And to go out of your game to then do essentially in-character, out-of-character admin, we think it's a bit silly, where we can just turn that into an in-character thing. So one of our guilds is the Bankers Guild, which is right in the centre of the city. So it's equal for all nations to get to, so it's equal distance. And then what you can do from there is you'll have an in-character passport. So when you talk, go in and talk, so, hey, I want to access my money, or I want to change some stuff with my character, you can then go and go, can I do some stuff, please? You go, yeah, sure, uh, can I get your documents, please? You hand over your passport, and it's a completely in-character thing. So when you're waiting in queue, to like get whatever it is you want to get sorted, access your money, change it to somewhere else, uh, access a skill or ask for like an OC question. You can do that all in character, wait in character. And then with uh, things like other skills that aren't like locked in, we also have an enchanting system and a potion making system. So it's got like Skyrim like benches for apothecary uh, stuff and enchanting. They'll be around this. So whilst you're waiting for stuff to get done, you're also seeing people make their magic potions or magic ingredients or as well as like enchanting stuff. So there's role play happening around you while still doing the, like the boring admin bit, but making it in character so you can still chat with your friends and it's not taking you out of the game. Excellent stuff. And there was a question at the back. So you've mentioned the different nations. Have you got any plans for different races and or lineages of similar? Um, so, we're only going to be having humans as a base thing. There is a variety of magical planes that you can interact with, um, and they can have somewhat unpredictable effects on you um, that will potentially give access to weird uh, makeup or potentially some prosthetics. Um, but the only uh, race we're going to be having is going to be humans. So what we want to do with that is race can be sometimes a problem and leaving it up to players some people have a different varieties of what is actually acceptable um, so if you said we have like orcs or goblins that has some negative connotations to that and it's not really a safe place that our players have access to so if we just have humans that's safe we're all human no one's going to have a problem with that but then we also have the magic can affect you so a bit like lineages, like I said before, we want the, and we're really going to focus on making sure that everyone can have amazing looking kits and amazing looking different prosthetics and different makeup. So you can go in looking at an amazing individual cool character, but at the same time, we're not, but you are still human. You're just affected by magic, so you look different. But that's not a, uh, a thing that's passed down by your parents. That's something that's affected you as an individual. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. We have more questions. Uh, hi. Um, so what kind of ratio are you looking at for like prompt writers compared to players? And obviously, when this becomes inevitably popular, have you got a plan for like scaling that up as you get more players, having more people writing plot? So when you arrive, everyone feels like they're involved in the game in some way. <laughs> So, um, in terms of the plot writing, we've, uh, we've saw what you already mentioned, we're having basically multi-level plot system. Uh, so what that means is you have overarching world plot, you would have nation plot, you would have guild plot, you might even, to a certain degree, end up with smaller group plot and stuff like that. It's not necessarily going to be about the ratio, it's probably going to be more about demand. Um, so, for example, if the, if the Adventurers Guild was overloaded with players because it's so popular, we would increase the plot for that. And if it wasn't, then we might take divert a plot away from that and put it into other areas. Same with the weird weaving or anything else. 
Um, the intent is that we will have uh, volunteer staff members within uh, each of the nations as well, that will probably also have a bit more of a first-hand um, look and feel on what, how players are interacting and engaging with the game, and they'll probably have a, a larger handle on the plot for them that uh, comes out of the nation, which should make that a little bit more tailor-made to uh, to those players rather than just a, just the overarching here's the world plot and hope people hope people engage. I think, I think that was it. Yeah, so we're also having a lot of player reps as well in our system. So what we're doing is uh, so doing a plot management system on a national level. So what we're going to have is essentially we'll have like the people that are the OC heads who are running every nation. As I do, but not running the nation in an in-character way, running it in an out-of-character way. So everyone's aware of, hey, welcome to your nation, this is the brief, this is how you get onto things. But they're essentially managers in the game, and then you can have people that are player refs, who are going to ref themselves in. And what they're allowed to do is, as a reward for helping refing the game and not having access to stuff, is they, um, well, access to titles, is that they could write personal plot for their nation, but they can't write plot for themselves or a group that they are in. Which means that you have people playing in the same nation as you, who know your group and have interacted with you, who are now writing special plot for your group or for individuals within each nation. And then as then goes up, checks with the managers to make sure that is a safe and engaging game. And then checks with world uh, plot team, they make sure that, that is a good uh, plot, it's not against the world plot, and it carries on. So we're probably going to end up with something around um, 80 to 100 plus refs throughout the game for the amount of hand refs we have in each nation. And then that's the people then writing the plot for each individual nation as well. So we have loads, and they shouldn't have a problem of getting it, but obviously then increasing demand on individual areas. Excellent. So um, we, we, we've run out of time, but I'm going to do one more thing. I want to take very quick from all four of you, one at a time. What is the one thing that you would want to say to try to encourage everybody here to come and sign up for Mendes Day? <laughs> Surprise question. We'll start with the person who's most prepared. She, ju she just went, oh, next to me, so you can go first. Hi, everybody. If you're interested in this lark, go to menesfate.com. It's literally just the email sign up at this point. But um, if you want to know more, we'll get in touch with you. It's spelt like this if you're interested, you can come and get a flyer. I know it's a strange word. We thought about it for a long time and we're like, screw it. We love the word too much. So you're writing it in a URL. Uh, bookmark it, manyisfake.com, and there's an email box. Put your email in and we'll update you when it's available. Thank you. I may be biased, but come along and try this game because I guarantee you will never experience a, a magic system the same as this. It's going to be epic. Again, our systems I think are really good. If you like to have be in character for as much as possible and that have to deal with all the out of character stuff, having people that are in the event management industry look after you and look after the game and having a massive look at the infrastructure that goes behind the scenes and having loads of information, of, of, essentially loads of effort put into that. Uh, that's the thing, a, a massive win for us, is the level of professionalism that we have in this, in this system. I think for me, we're wanting to try and evolve LARP as a hobby, as a game that we all enjoy, as a game that so many other people enjoy as well. So it's a community, come and do that with us. It's not just we're running a game and we never ever want to see or interact with you. We want a community who's building this world with us and making all of the ideas that we've talked about really come alive. Excellent stuff. After this, we are over in the forest glade and we will actually be running, there'll be a lot of LARPers over there doing Men Here's Fate things, be able to answer questions over there and they'll be showing off some of the wonderful kit for it all. I'm just a bear, it's great. I am the best bear. But thank you everybody for coming to listen to this today. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Hopefully you all sign up and we see you in a massive field. 
helping each other with fake reference. It's great. Thank you very much.